Hey guys, it's Joe from Scarecrow Joe's studio. Thank you for joining us today. This is our very first uh, YouTube video and tutorial. We're gonna start with the basics on making a paper mache jack-o-lantern from start to finish. These are some of the things that you can make by applying the simple techniques that I will show you today during this video. You can make something very large like this using a beach ball. You can use paper or plastic bags, stuff with newspaper. Um, you can make a cat -a lantern And then you can build yourself up in making something more elaborate like this troll character by Viking Troll. So all these things you can apply that you're going to learn today on making various things um, in this tutorial. So, so let's not chatter. Let's get right down to it. So, step two, to make the pumpkin form using plastic bags stuffed with newspaper, you're going to get a bunch of wadded up newspaper and just stuff that bag. Keep stuffing until you get the size of the bag that you want it to be. You can stuff it completely full or if you want it to be a smaller pumpkin form. Um, and you just don't stuff it as full. We're going to go with this for the purpose of this tutorial. <laughs> All right. That was our cat Louie, if you guys saw him. So basically, I'm squeezing the air out of it. At this point, don't really worry so much on the form of the pumpkin. Just squeeze the air out as much as you can, and then you're going to tie it off. Now what I like to do is I tuck these inside like this to get them out of the way. I take a second bag, I turn this bag over, I take this second bag. You know how plastic bags are square looking? So you want to flip this so that the square part is over the other square part. Does that even make any sense? <laughs> I don't know if it makes any sense. You want this top part <laughs> that you tie it off, you want that to be on top. You want to take your bag, your second bag, flip it over so that the square ends are opposite of the other square ends. Flip it over and we're going to tie this off on top once more. Give it a good tight pull there. There we go. I like to tuck these things in. Okay. You can kind of squeeze it, get some more of the air out. Shape your pumpkin a little bit. But like I said, don't be overly concerned about the shape of your pumpkin. One of the nice things about this technique is that you're going to get pumpkins that are different shapes and sizes. I use masking tape because you're, you're going to want a piece of masking tape to hold these pieces down that you tied off. Also what I do is I flip over, you see how you have these little flaps here? You want to tape those off as well. Piece of tape there to tape that back like that piece of tape here, tape this back like this, and there you have it, just like that, pumpkin form. This is very basic. There are lots of different other things. Some people tie strings around this to make the, you know, so they already have that form where they can follow the ridges. I don't even bother with that, and you'll see why, okay, because I think it's a waste of time. You can go ahead and do that if you want. So this is the first pumpkin form. From here, we're going to go into the next workstation over there, and I'm going to show you the next steps. Okay, for this next step, we're going to make paper mache paste. Um, you're going to need flour, cheap white flour. You're going to need some kind of glue. I happen to have on hand wood glue. You don't need to use wood glue. You can use the cheapest white glue that you can find. That's all that you need. And, of course, water in a container to put all this in. So, 
Ignore the fact that I already have some paste in here. I'm just going to make more over this. I didn't want to throw out the paste that I had already made uh, earlier. So I'm just adding some flour. Um, if you got a small sculpture that you're working on, you're going to need less paste, of course. If you have a large sculpture, you're going to need a little more paste. And sorry, guys, I don't have measurements for this stuff, okay? I just kind of I eyeball it. I put some flour in there, a little bit of glue in there, and then I add some water. I don't know how much water. I just kind of put the water in there. You take a whisk, whisk that all together. Try not to splash the camera. <laughs> anyway fun stuff right so you're gonna want it to be because I don't measure sorry about that you really want it to be the consistency of a thin pancake batter that's that's the best don't worry if you, if you think you have too much or not enough glue you don't really need a whole lot of glue you just need a little um, if it's too thick add more water if it's too thin add a little bit more flour some people um, when they make their paste, they don't even use flour. There's lots of different recipes out there for making paper mache paste. They all work. Mine is not superior over any other uh, paste. So don't worry about that. Um, this is just what I do. It's what I've always done. It's what's worked for me. And you can see the consistency here. See that? And don't worry so much about if there's little bits and clumps of flour in there that's not going to be a big deal okay so that's step two all right next step is the strip mache process we're going to strip mache the bag that we put together and also a balloon we're going to do a small balloon today you can blow them up bigger if you want something bigger i'll show you the process in both first tip on this is set aside some pieces of your newspaper that you're going to use as a marker. This doesn't make sense right now, but it will later. Pieces of newspaper that have a lot of color or words that are going to stand out. So I'm going to set these two aside. I take my strip of paper in here, and we're going to do one side at a time. How many layers, right? Well, I'm going to say at least four to five layers across the whole thing. Um, the more layers you have, the stronger your armature or your structure is going to be. So I'm just kind of overlapping a little bit and covering the entire pumpkin form. We'll speed through it. I just want you, as a beginner, if you're watching this, to understand the entire process. it around here we're almost at the end of the pumpkin overlap them overlap each other make sure you are also covering the entire top and you're gonna have this overlap here um, you're gonna want your top and your bottom of your pumpkin to be very strong as well as um, the entire dimension as well but because you're you're gonna be building a stem onto the top and cutting out the bottom and that's where the weight is gonna be on the bottom um, you're going to want that very strong. So, I've covered the pumpkin completely in one, um, one layer of mache. So, this is why I'm taking a colored piece that stands out. That's going to be my marker. So, I'm going to know that once I, reach, once I reach this strip, when I come around, I know that that's going to be layer two. Um, now, as you can see, at this point, because the pumpkin has quite a bit of paste on it, you don't need to dip your your pieces of newspaper. You don't need to dip your pieces of newspaper in every single time um, to get it to, to get it to stick. All right, so that's basically that's that's the gist of it. Okay, so that's that part right there. Um, at that point, when you get you go around four or five times or more, you can do it as many times as you want. You're going to flip it over. You're going to do the same exact thing. Circular 
strips of paper dipped in your paste okay so that's that it's easier to have a container or something like this um, to sit it on I like mine to be a little bit higher I'm a short person so um, I like it to be a little higher it helps my back with these little round balloons get a piece of something like a little bowl or something that's going to be your structure now for the smaller ones I have a separate little bucket here of strips of paper that I've cut up because it's smaller and these ones as you can see is too much for that little little form there so this is a little bit different basically what I do is I do a crisscross pattern you're gonna do this crisscross pattern and you're gonna do it the entire perimeter of your little balloon form here and I would say again a good four to five strips across each other to make this form solid once it's dry so you're gonna do that crisscross pattern all the way around make sure that you evenly distribute your strips of paper make sure you've covered your balloon completely using a colored balloon like purple or red or something is going to be easier to see than using a white balloon okay so once you have it all the way around and it's all overlapped and nice and and overlapped you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the top and then you'll flip it over once that top is completely done you're going to do several across the top like I said a good amount the more strip mache you have on here the stronger your armature is going to be flip it over again you're going to do the bottom the same way Sorry. <laughs> she hit me in the head All right, so basically you'll continue that method. I'm not gonna hang out here and do this whole thing. It's just, it's redundant. And to tell you the truth, this is the process in paper mache that is my least favorite. So what I do is I am I do a lot of these at the same time, because I don't wanna have to like every other day make a structure because I hate this so much. It's, it's messy and it gets really monotonous and redundant. Put on a, a movie in the background that you really enjoy, some music, and just have at it. Do a bunch of them. If, if that's what you want to do, do a bunch of them. Do them all at the same time. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, so now you have your completely strip mache pumpkin form, whether it's a balloon or a bag. That's what we just did. And now it's the waiting game, the drying time. Drying time is going to vary on the amount of layers that you have and the condition that you're drying it in. It happens to be a nice spring, beautiful day here in Tahoe where we live, so I'm putting mine outside. So basically I just put it on a bucket or something like that and I just leave it in the sun to dry. Um, you know, I do these things year round, so if it's not a bright sunny day outside, raining or whatnot, put it near a heating vent or you can actually put it in front of a fan and let the, the fan just dry it. During the drying process, you do want to flip this a few times to make sure that all sides of it are dried completely. Usually it takes a few days. Now, here's a tip, something that you're going to want to remember. If you're doing a balloon and you're not doing one of these, or a beach ball, so anything that you put air into, you do not want to put in direct sunlight in the heat because air expands when it gets hot and then you're going to have splits in your mache, your strip mache. And you don't want that. So keep those inside. Okay? Let those dry indoors out of direct sunlight. All right. So now, next step, you have your completely solid dry form. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use the bag form that I showed earlier on strip macheing. So once it's dry, you're going to find, basically I sit it up 
and I'm going to find where I kind of think I could design a, a face on it. So I'll flip it over and I cut out the bottom part. So you're going to cut out that bottom part and then you're going to take all of the newspaper out of there that was bundled up. You're going to pull out the bag. Uh, make sure you get all the bags and all the newspaper and all that stuff. If there's any tape that's in there that ended up in there, take all of that out. Hope you guys can see that. That's the way it looks. All right. Now from there, you start your design. Okay. Move my mimosa. So if you're real confident in your design, I use... Uh, marker sharpie if not you can use a pencil um, the other thing that you can do is draw out your design on a piece of paper you can cut out the eyes from the piece of paper tape it or affix it somehow onto your form your nose your mouth draw along there so once you have that done then you'll be ready to cut them out and then the fun part we're at the beginning of the fun part at that point. All right, so I've determined, at this point, I've determined what side I'm going to create my jack-o'-lantern face on. I put a little arrow here that indicates pretty much what the center is. Um, don't, don't worry so much about these little details, okay? Um, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. Don't worry about this, don't worry about that. And seriously, you'll understand once we get to the final product and you'll see. So I'm going to do a very basic jack-o'-lantern face for the sake of this tutorial. An eye there, an eye there. You can make round eyes, you can get, get creative in your design. Um, again, don't worry so much about if one is one eye is bigger than the other. It's a jack-o'-lantern. Um, none of them are perfect. So I've got my two eyes there. I'll put a nose in there. The other thing that you can do is once you make a form like this and you have your cutouts and you like that design, do not discard the cutouts. Keep those because you could use those and I'll give you an example. So this is an example of a cutout of a mouth that I drew that I kind of liked. And so basically I'm just gonna over, overlay that here and I'm gonna draw around it. Like so. doesn't need to be perfect you can even it out after you take the cut out off of your jack-o'-lantern form all right so there we go now you can see how I missed some spots here so I'm just gonna kind of fill them in like so None of these wrinkles and things are going to matter. I cannot stress that enough. It's not going to matter once you get the clay over them and you start building up your, your pumpkin form, your design. Looks like a happy little pumpkin. So at that point, you're going to want some kind of a knife or a blade. I use a box cutter, I guess this is what this is called. I have no idea. Carpenter's tool. Um, you can use a serrated knife if you don't have something like this. 
Um, the other thing is, guys, you don't really need to go out and buy anything special if you don't already have it. Use what you have. Use a serrated knife. It's going to be fine. And you're going to want to carefully cut out your features here. There's the eye. There's one eye. There's another eye. And again, this is a very simple design that I just threw on here for the purpose of this video. Um, I'm sure yours is going to be better. I'm actually... I don't like the fact that the mouth is so close to the nose here. I want more of a gap, so I'm going to make this... I'm gonna bring this nose up just a little bit and make it a little smaller because I want to have some room when I go in and do the sculpt. There are many different ways to create your design. This is what I do. There are many other people that do have different techniques. Some of them don't even do the cutout at this point. They just sculpt along with their paper clay. They just sculpt along the um, the outlines, and they build up that form. And then after their sculpture is dry, they go in and they and then they cut it. They cut it out. But I'm going to show you what I do, what I I like to do, and why I like to do it this way. Always be mindful of your your fingers, your other your arm. You don't want to have that blade slip and cut yourself. I've actually not. I better knock on some wood real quick. I've never cut myself doing this. I have burned myself pretty good with hot glue, um, and I'll show you how you can avoid that. So just gently, if you get to a point where you're doing this and you feel like there's some areas that your strip mache job wasn't the best, just go real gentle. Cause right here it's, I could tell that it's thinner than I would want it to be, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how to get around that. I am not the best. Uh, at strip machining, like I said during that portion of the video, it's boring to me. It's monotonous and redundant, and I hate it. So I move as quickly as I possibly can, and so I'm probably the worst strip machiner in the planet. You want to make sure that you're going to take your time. Um, so that your structure when you're strip machining is nice and solid. I'm just going to take the little cutouts out of there, discard that stuff. There we go. Designed. What are we going to do for a stem? First of all, this part is really thick because during that process when we were strip machining, you notice how we overlap, overlap, overlap. So this is going to be thick and it's going to be a little bit tougher to cut through. There are many different things that you can use for a stem. Commonly, what I like to use for a stem is um, toilet paper, the, in, the, the inside roll of the toilet paper, the cardboard portion. Or paper towel roll. So these are some of the things that I use. Or um, what I really like to use is these nice, thicker um, things that you find in like aluminum foil at the end of the roll and you have this left. Keep these. These are great. So we're going to go ahead and use one of these. You can use one of these if you want, if you want a thicker stem, but it doesn't matter because you can get a thicker stem out of just using this by building up thicker amounts of clay on that. So this is what I do here. I find the center of my pumpkin and I take my marker. I draw around here. Okay, that's where we're going to cut it out. 
Now, as you can see, it's a little bit more of a struggle because it's thicker, so be very, very careful in doing this. Don't try, I mean, if it is thick like this, don't try to get it all the way through at the first shot. Um, and then also, be very mindful when you're pushing your hand against this part if it feels a little flimsy, because you don't want to cave that in. Starting to break a sweat, man. Where's my mimosa? Ah. Ah, that's better. Okay. Finally broke through there. Where'd that little guy go? Oh, here it is. Keep these. Keep these little things, okay? Don't throw them away. All right. Now, at this point, we're going to insert our structure our little uh, cardboard roll here I don't know if you can see in the bottom or at the side um, you want to you want to insert it I would say at least a good half inch to quarter quarter of an inch to a half inch okay so that's about right where I want it and what I do is I'm gonna mark the area where it's gonna be the base of the stem. So I have that there. So when I reinsert this in there, I'm going to know exactly how far down without fooling around too much with it. So how high do you want your stem? How long or tall do you want your stem? Let's give them a good one here. I'm going to go about right there. So I'll mark that area. I'm going to come up here. I'll mark it all around. Does not need to be perfect. Again, I'm going to tell you, don't worry about this stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all going to come out great in the end. All right, continuing on with the design phase of your jack-o'-lantern sculpture. In this phase, you will need, again, a hot glue gun, hot glue sticks, a little cup of cold water for accidents. You're going to need flexible cardboard. This is commonly found in your food packaging like cereal boxes. Um, that's the flexible cardboard. All right, you'll need a pair of scissors. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your flexible cardboard and cut strips. I like to use my strips of cardboard as a guideline on how thick I want my clay to be on the pumpkin or the jack o' lantern form. So, that's what we're going to do. Let's do the stem first, okay? So, hot glue gun is all nice and ready to go. So we're going to glue the stem in place here. Put a bead of glue right around there. All right. And then remember how I told you guys not to discard the little cutout from that pumpkin? Because we're going to use that to cap the stem. Unless you're doing a longer curly stem then you won't do this part. And I'll do a whole other tutorial on curly stems, but we're gonna, we're gonna stick to this type of stem. Very carefully, just put that in place. Don't push down so hard, because otherwise, if this isn't dry before you do this part, you're just gonna end up pushing your stem down in there. So you're gonna let that dry, and then once it's dried, what I do is I just take the hot glue, and I come around, and I make sure that the little cap on the end of my stem is gonna be nice and secure with some hot glue. Make sure you dry, let that dry completely, um, because if you go to handle this, you can get burned with hot glue. There's been many times where I've accidentally touched something that had scalding hot glue, and that's why I have a little cup of cold water, because I instantly, if I get, starts burning, I stick my finger in the cold water, it cools it down completely, and then I can just peel off that hot glue, and it saves you a lot of pain. All right, so we waited for that. That's completely dry. So basically what we're going to do is we take a piece of our uh, cardboard cutout, and we just kind of line it up like this. Cut it to fit in, cut it to fit inside. All right, can you guys see that? So it fits right inside there. 
take the hot glue and we're gonna do this for the entire features of the cutout glue that right in there like that and you can see now how I'm gonna use that as my guide for the thickness of my clay when I start to actually sculpt in with the paper mache clay. So one tip that I have for you is that you see you have this glossy side of the cardboard and then you actually have the, the side that doesn't have any glossy or printed stuff. You wanna keep this to be the inside let the glossy part be the outside. It's easier to work with when you're when you're putting clay inside the connecting pieces because it sticks better. The clay will stick better on the non-glossy side of the flexible cardboard as opposed to the glossy side. Okay? So make sure if you're doing this technique that I'm showing you, make sure you have the non-glossy side inside of the pumpkin. All right, so I have completed the design phase of my jack-o'-lantern sculpture. So as you can see, I've hot glued in all the pieces of cardboard. And if you get to this point and some of your pieces of cardboard don't line up, don't stress about that. That's an easy fix. Simply take your scissors and trim it down a little. Do the same if these on your teeth, if they don't connect, do the same thing, trim it down a little. It doesn't have to be perfect, you guys, okay? So now basically I wanna to talk to you a little bit about making paper mache clay. There are so many different recipes out there on how to make paper mache clay. There are so many different ingredients that you can use to make your paper mache clay. Um, there's a ton of tutorials on how to do it, so I'm not going to really bore you guys um, with the way that I make the paper mache clay for myself. I will tell you the ingredients that I use. First of all, we already made the paste. So the paste is the main ingredient for, the, uh, uh, or the base ingredient of your paper mache clay. Um, the other thing that I add after I make the paste is I add a couple of scoops of this drywall joint compound that makes it harder. And then for the actual clay aspect of the paper aspect of the clay, I have this, this is what I use called green fiber blow-in insulation. It's, uh, what is it? It's biodegradable, it's recycled materials, it's paper, ground up paper, if you can see that. Um, you can buy it, it's relatively cheap, it's about 13 bucks for this giant bale. Um, so this is ideal if you're going to make a lot of props. Um, otherwise you can pulp your own paper out of newspaper, you can find tutorials on that. I have seen people make clay out of uh, sawdust. Believe it or not, toilet paper. Now, we're not going to do toilet paper because at the time of the filming of this tutorial is during the <laughs> coronavirus pandemic, and we all know that toilet paper is a hot commodity. So, But later on, if you're making smaller props and you want to make your own homemade clay, that's you could, that's an easy one to do. If you don't want to make your own clay, you don't have to. You can buy pre-made uh, clay and all you have to do paper mache clay that is you could buy it pre-made um, you can buy it online right now you know and all you have to do is add water and bam there you go you have clay the downside to that is it's relatively expensive if you're making a lot of props so if you're making a lot of art or props for Halloween or Christmas or whatever your thing is you're gonna want to make your own because it's gonna save you some money all right, so what I've done, this is my batch of pre-made clay using the green fiber insulation. Um, and this is basically what it looks like. Now this is approximately two pounds of flour that I've used to create um, the paste out of. And as you can see, 
you kind of want it it's dried out a little bit but don't stress about that if you get your clay to a point where you think it's it's too dry that's all right all you have to do is add a little bit of the paper mache paste this is basically the consistency that I like it to be where I can make a ball out of it and it's not gonna fall apart um, but if, if like I said if you think it's too dry then go ahead and add a little add a little paste to it all right so the second thing that I want to mention um, before I move on to that is that this is a little flimsy right once we get that clay on there it's gonna start to cave in a little bit depending on the thickness so what you can do is stuff this thing with newspaper the newspaper if you stuff it real good and tighten here with newspaper it's gonna help it to hold that form and it won't co collapse in on itself if you have weak spots now you want to kind of make sure to avoid any of that anyway don't do what I do and just haphazardly and you're, you get bored with it make sure that you really build up your armature your, your strip mache process it's gonna save you a lot of headache all right so tools that you're gonna need aren't many um, I have very basic sculpting tools there's really two tools that I that I generally use those are these things right here they have these different edges um, I think I picked these up at um, Michael's art supply store I think it was like three bucks so you get a set it comes with uh, this thing as well so you get a set um, and these are the things that I use all the time now if you don't have any sculpting tools don't worry about it you can use a spoon you can use a butter knife use what you have uh, don't go out and buy anything special to do a sculpture alright so here we go so I'm going to start sculpting <laughs> 